Okay, we just learned about this application.input box function, which, um, <clears throat> which when we put a type here, it, it validates the data that the user put in, and it returns whatever they, if it's validated, if it's good data that they put in, it'll return that data to us. So depending on what the user puts in, we're going to be able to take that data that the user gives us and do something with it. Uh, I'm just going to comment out these two pieces of code here. Actually, well, I'll just leave them. Yeah, I'll comment them off. And now I will start writing some code. Let me go up to top here. So what I'm going to do is do this, uh, dim numbers range as range. So I want the user to give me a range of cells on the worksheet and it's going to, I'm going to hold that range that they give me in this number range, in this number range object that is, has a data type, uh, an object type of range. It's a range object. And then what I'm going to do is dim C as range and max value as double and max address as string. So I'll use all these variables in the upcoming code. And what I want to do now is set number range equal to Uh, application dot range and my prompt oops application dot input box and my prompt enter a range of cells to find max And my title will be find max. And default, I'm just going to have nothing for default. In that parameter, it's optional. I'm going to leave it blank. I'm going to leave those, the left and the top parameter blank, the help file blank, the help context ID blank. And then this last one, I want to put in the number eight because I, I want to accept a range object. So when I do that, if I put in 8 here, what this does, it, it's, it's going to pop up an input box and the user is going to select a, a range. Versus over here, or the user is going to provide me a range object and that's the only thing that's going to be acceptable. Versus up here, I put the number 1 and that means they can only give me numbers. And those numbers are here again in that Excel VBA sql.com. Zero means a formula, one's a number, two's a string, four is a Boolean, eight's a range, sixteen is an error, and sixty-four is an array. So now once they give me a range, I can do something with that range. And what I'm gonna do is find the maximum value. in the range and to do that all I have to do is something like this a for each loop uh, first I'm going to set max value equal to whatever whatever is the first value in the first cell so I'm going to put number range dot cells comma one comma one dot value and I'll show you what this means in a second and then max address is equal to numbers range dot cells one comma one dot address so they're gonna pass in this range and I'm gonna put it in I'm gonna store that range in this range object numbers range 
And that range object is composed of cells. So I could use this dot cells. Uh, I could use that to specify a particular cell in this range. Not necessarily row one, column one on the worksheet. This is row one, column one in whatever range they give me. And then I could look at the value in that cell by using this dot value property. Or I could look at the address of that cell by looking by doing the dot address uh, property. Now I can loop over this range that they give me by doing this for each C in uh, numbers range dot cells. So that is going to loop over all the cells. And all I want to do is that if C dot value is greater than the max value, then I want to do something. And I just want to, I found a new maximum. So I want to put max value is equal to C dot value and max address is equal to C dot address. So all I want to do is they pass in a range. I want to find the maximum value in that range and I want to know what address that's that that maximum value is in. So now I will display max value and its address. And to do that, I'll just do a message box. That says the max value is and max value and then I'll do at max address okay I need a, I need an ampersand here so this for each loop let me just put a comment in here loops over the range the user provided it loops over the cells in the range the user provided and all I'm doing is if one of the cells contains a value that's bigger than the max value then I have a new max so this is a new max new max is found and this is the address of the new max so I want to find the maximum value in a range and all this does is the initial maximum value initial max value is whatever is in first cell in range an initial address is address of the first cell in the range. So let's put a breakpoint here. I'll put it right here. And let's run this code. So now if I go to the workbook, let's say I have some numbers here like 4, 6, 3, uh, 2, Oh yeah, just four, six, and two. If I if I run this code, oops, variable is not defined. It should be just number range. So if I run this now, I get to this line where I'm going to display this input box. And I will run this. And there's my input box. It says enter a range of cells to find max. And I'll enter this. Look it, I'm just I'm selecting a range of cells. So I give it a range, I click OK. And now the max value is going to be the first cell in that range. Notice the first cell is 4 
because I had I selected that range of numbers. So the max value, I'll just bring up the locals window uh, here. The max value is four because it's the first cell in the range. I selected this range of three cells here. The first cell in that range is four. There it is, four, because I did the range, number range dot cells, one comma one dot value. That gave me four. And then the address is J4, and that's because I did number range dot cells, one one dot address. So now I have my max value, four, and my address, J4, which is this cell here. And now I'm going to loop over this range. And each time through the loop, you know, that was the first time through the loop. And 4 is not greater than 4. I already, I already know that, right? I'm just looping down this range, and I'm in the first cell where the value is 4. That's what C dot value is. It's 4. The next time through the loop, C dot value is going to be 6. And that's going to be greater than 4. So if I step into this, now I have a new max value, which is going to be 6. You see it changed to 6 here. And the max address is going to change to J5. It's going to be now this cell, you know, row 5, column J, J5. And then I can loop through, and I do it again. And now I'm looking at C dot value. Well, that's going to be 2 here, because I'm looping through the range. And that's not bigger than 6. And so I step out of that, and now I'm out of my for each loop because there's only three cells here, and I loop three times. And now I display a message box that says the max value is whatever's in the max value variable at whatever's in the max address variable, and I hit this, and it says the max value in the range is 6 at J5. So there's the 6 at J5. And I can just stop it there. Now let me show you if I put a hundred a thousand over here, seven 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 hundred thousand there, uh, six hundred sixty six here, uh, ninety nine 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 the biggest one over there, and whatever something over here. Now let me select a different range. So I'll run this code again. Oops, I don't like I don't like having these breakpoints on, so let me get rid of them. I run the code. It asks me for a range. I go here and look at the range I'm selecting. It's a big range. It goes from here all the way to here. And it should come back with the max is what is that number at that address. So I click OK and it tells me the max value is is uh oh, I have to I have to change this wording but it says the max value is this number here like 999 trillion or whatever that is at L11 well we're in column L and we're in row 11 and I click OK so let me change that text down here the max value in the range is oh that's true okay so that's all this video did it displayed an input box and the main thing is that you set the type of input you want with this last parameter, the type parameter. And I put 8 in there because I wanted a range. One other thing is, well, let's see one more thing. If I click uh, play and I click cancel, I get an error. And it says object required. And that's because when I clicked cancel, let me just end this. Um, let's see what happens. I'll stop this here. And I want to see what number range is when I click cancel. So let me run this. I click cancel. And it doesn't even go to, it doesn't even let me assign the cancel, the cancel to number range. So right now, I'm just going to show you what you can do about that. You can do something like this. On error, go to canceled. And what this does is if the user presses cancel, you 
go to the cancel label. So you could put labels in your code. Um, we're not going to do it often at all. In fact, we're going to do it rarely. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how to do it. If there's an error, you put this. If you want to handle an error, one way of doing it is this. You can say on error, go to, and then put a label in your code. And our label is going to be right at the very end of the code where we end the sub. So here. And then you put a colon. So now, if there's an error, because I wrote that line, on error, go to canceled, the next line of code is going to be whatever is below this label. It's going to jump over all this stuff. It's not going to do any of the code. So if I run the code now and I press cancel, it works fine because I, I handled that error uh, when the cancel the the cancel button is clicked so that's all this video is showing you is how to use input boxes how to take a range or a number or whatever you want with that with that type thing the that's not the type thing the type parameter here so use that and take some input from your user these are very useful things and then you could do things with whatever they give you in, in this case we did a pretty complex example where we we took a range as, range as our input and then we looped over the range and found the maximum value. One thing to remember is when you're working with objects, you got to use this set keyword. So because this is a range object, you have to do set number range equal to something. Um, so that's it for this video. We'll move on.